Hi. So here's what I decided to do because I do all these random just, you know, journal pages that I post to YouTube and they are just me going through my thought process as I'm starting a journal page and how I'm going to execute it. But I decided that what I want to do when I first started doing this mixed media stuff last October, I immersed myself, I bought a whole bunch of books on mixed media techniques from Amazon.com and I immersed myself in these books. So I would order a book, it would come, I would go front to back in one sitting, um, just ooing and aahing over all the pages. And I would flag a bunch of, you know, techniques and I'm like, oh, I want to try that. And, um, but then I put these in my bookshelf and I never reference these again. So these have been just sitting in my bookshelf and I've been watching all these YouTube videos to get ideas for doing journal pages. And it's the same thing. I'll throw, throw them in my favorites and, um, and then I'll, I'll never go back and reference it again and do it. And then I come in here in my craft room and I'm like, what do I want to do? How do I want to start? And <laughs> so I just have decided I'm going back to my books that are sitting in my bookshelf. And I want to start taking some of those books that I really liked. And um, I want to start using the techniques in my journal page so I thought I would take you along with with with, with me with that process so <clears throat> the four books that I really really liked and enjoyed for art journaling are these four books that I've pulled so this is surface treatment workshop by Darlene McElroy and Sandra Wilson and um, I had I if you're new to this I would recommend just going online and checking out all the books and seeing what you know what you like. But for me, I think these are the best um, books. I did a lot of research on Amazon trying to find good you know books, and I read a lot of reviews. And these are the ones that I went with. So even though I'm going to be going through the process of doing this on a video, I would recommend every you know if you if you're interested in this to go onto Amazon and buy these books yourself because there's something about having a physical book. I have a Kindle. I keep a lot of books that I'm altering. I'm making sure that um, I replace it on my Kindle before I alter a book. And um, I've only done one, but still, that's that's what I'm going to do is replace all, all the books. And I'm going to, in the future, that I'll be altering, make sure I have it on my Kindle um, before I start messing with a book <clears throat> and tearing it up. But um, there's something about these technique books that I really can't get into the Kindle version of it. I like having a physical book and being able to, you know, just thumb through it like this and, you know, flag pages and you can, yeah, you can flag on a Kindle, but like I said, it's just not the same as having a physical book and looking at it and being able to access it. So these are the types of books that I will always keep on a bookshelf and not have on my Kindle. Anyway, so Surface Treatment Workshop, great book. Another one is by the same people who wrote this one, Image Transfer Workshop. This is another wonderful book. It's Mixed Media techni Techniques for Successful Transfers. My New Goddess, Lynn Perea. She has this book, Artist Journals and Sketchbooks. I just go through here and look at all the images and I'm just like, oh, drooling. I just love, love, love this book. I've just ordered some of Lynn Perea's stamps, a couple of stamp sets, because um, I did not realize that she made... Um, she was a stamp designer, and when I found that out and looked at it, I was like, oh my gosh, love it, right up my alley. And then, Acrylic Revolution by Nancy Rayner. This is another just awesome book if you're just getting into this and you don't know much about acrylic paints and how to use them and the techniques. This is an awesome book. So, what I thought I would do is pick some techniques, start at the beginning, work my way through a book, and, and just start doing, you know, my journal pages based off of the, some of the techniques in here. So I may pull, you know, one technique from a book um, 
and then, you know, I may mix though, you know, start with this, start a base with this book and then pick something from this and use them, um, you know, jointly together. But what I'm going to do is start a new page. So I have decided to try this surf surface treatment workshop book and I'm going to just start right in the beginning. Um, I'm going to do just a single page. Um, I usually work in you know, double page spreads when I do my art journaling, but for doing this and learning techniques, I've decided I'm just going to do single page spreads. This is just a clean off um, page from when I was doing some jelly printing a couple of weeks ago, and I just used this as a clean off page for my brayer, so. <clears throat> but I'm going to use this page right here to start this next, uh, you know, this first technique that I'm going to pull from this book. So get in here. So the first one is on stamping. I've already done. I don't really need to. I'm not going to use that one. And same with stenciling. I've been using stencils for quite a while now, so that's not a technique I'm really going to go over. Now, aluminum foil. I have used aluminum foil on pages, um, the foil tape, and um, this is about using a sheet of aluminum foil from your pantry. And the problem is, is that it you should use heavy duty aluminum foil for this technique. And I only have the lightweight stuff in my pantry right now. So I've got to deviate from this technique a little bit already. But <clears throat> um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is this says that... Um, you take a texture plate and you put foil over the texture plate and just use your hand to rub um, the foil into the texture. Um, or you can use a stencil as well to do the same process. So you just lay a stencil out, put foil over it, and use your hands to get the impression into the foil. But um, like I said, I don't have the heavy duty stuff. So um, what I decided I'm going to use is the uh, foil tape. This is the um, 3M brand that I got from Lowe's, the you know hardware store, and <clears throat> it has the 3M logo all over it. But I don't. That doesn't bother me because I throw paint on this, alcohol inks, all kinds of stuff. So you, you never see it. And then when you gesso over this, it also lifts up the um, ink that's already on here. So that part doesn't bother me. And the reason why I went with this is because it's a wider roll than um, the other rolls that were on that hardware aisle. Hardware aisle. So um, I went with the, the wider roll. And so that's what I'm going to do on this. I am going to take my Sizzix and get the impression in that way since I'm using this tape instead of aluminum foil. And um, I'm going to cut a bunch of strips down to this size. And if I go over, I'll just, you know, the top, I will just cut it off. So I'm going to cut a few of these strips. I'm going to need four of them to go across the page here. So I'm going to cut these off. Two of these are going to fit side by side in here, so I don't have to do too many passes through my Sizzix machine. I have the Sizzix Big Shot, and that's Sizzix Big Shot, and that's what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to put foil side down on here. Okay, good. It fits. If I can just keep it that way.
Okay, so I'm doing full side down in the folder. Kind of make my sandwich. So I'm using tab one, my cutting plate, the folder, the top cutting plate. Okay, and I'm gonna go over here for just a second and run this through the machine. Okay. Great. Okay, so you can see how that turned out. Pretty neat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these over, kinda just line this up like so, where I get the other side, the bottom half of this tape. So I'm going to have to do this um, another couple of times just to get the um, you know, rest of this tape done and then I will be back. And of course, don't you know on that video I had the um, impression going the wrong way. So in the folder, you did not want it face down. Instead you wanted it face up. I started looking at it and I was like, I have the debossed side, not the embossed side. And I guess it depends on what kind of look you're going for. If you like the debossed side, that would have been okay. But, <clears throat> yeah, so I had to cut out a couple of new strips because I wanted the debossed side, embossed side, I mean, <laughs> the embossed side to show. So, anyway, got these all cut out. I like the way they turned out. So now I'm just going to adhere these down. I'm going to start on this page and work my way out so that it will be easier to cut this off because I am going to overlap. So, the other great thing about using the foil tape as opposed to the aluminum foil from the pantry, although I do, if I had that, I, this is the way I would be following along with the book, is that if you are using the heavy duty aluminum foil, you do, you get it all in one sheet, which is great. <laughs> and, um, but the other thing is you have to lay a gel medium down to adhere the foil to the page and then let that dry. So with this, it's already sticky. So there is no waiting for the drying time. I'm just going to butt this up against here. Okay, right now I don't need that plastic sheet in there. Wax sheet, I mean. doing this off camera because I have this tape right up at my face. I've got to try to find the backing so I can get it peeled off. So excuse me for being out of frame. And I am in here. You can see part of my hello football jersey. I sleep in a football jersey so <laughs> I'm a big NFL fan, and I have a ton of football jerseys, and when they get too icky from washing them, I turn them into the thing I sleep in. So, and usually when I'm doing these videos, it's either late at night or first thing in the morning. So, before I'm going to bed and when I wake up in the morning. So, I'm almost always in a football jersey. when I'm doing these videos. 
That's why I don't get my face in the frame either because I'm pretty hideous when I don't have my hair done and <laughs> no makeup on. Wearing my dorky glasses. So I don't want to subject you guys to that. I have like really long hair and it just gets all in my face so I have to like pile it all up in a clip so it doesn't get in my way. Like I said, pretty hideous. Okay. Now the thing about the heavy duty foil is that when you're putting it on the great thing is, and I guess if you're using, um, you know, real aluminum foil, you do have to be a little bit more gentle with it because you don't want to smooth out the imprint that you've done with your hand. But because this was em embossed with the Sizzix machine and this heavy duty foil tape, I can be kind of rough with it just to make sure it's really adhered down. All right. So I'm just going to come back in here and I'm just going to use my hand to tear off the edging here where I went over. Ah, sticky. And then I'm going to fold it over a little bit. Any of the little stragglers. I don't really care if it's on the next page because this is my art journal page and you know art journal so I don't really care all right I might have to use my scissors because these are too narrow. To read, to fold over and tear. So, all right. And just be careful with it because it does have sharp edges. So you can cut yourself. I have cut myself smoothing this out along the edges because I just run my finger like that and cut myself so you definitely don't want to do that all right great so this is what it looks like you can see all that embossing on there awesome so now what I'm going to do is take a clear gesso I just have the Liquitex brand of clear gesso that I picked up at Michael's and I am just going to cover this up. Now I'm going to be a little forceful with my brush to try to get that, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, 3M logo up. But like I said, paint's going to be going over this anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to finish putting the gesso on, let this dry, and then I'll be back with the next layer. Okay, now that this is dry, I had taken three Pabillo Studio paints. These are all their Dyna colors. Um, well, except for this one. But um, I have iridescent red blue, iridescent orange yellow, and then the copper. Yeah, it is iridescent. Anyway, I am going to use those colors and apply it with a wet, damp, I mean, sea sponge. And I'm going in with the orange color first. And I'm just going to go all over this and dab the color in. And I'm not even going to clean the sponge off. I'm just going right into that iridescent red blue.
And so you can see what I was talking about with that 3M logo. You can't even see any of that anymore. Okay, without even cleaning it, I'm going into the copper, that copper color, and I'm just going to top it with that. Alright, so I'm going to finish with this, let it dry, and then come back and do the next layer. So now the paint has dried and I'm ready to move on to the next step. So in the book they're saying, you know, you after you use the paintbrush and desired paint, paint the foil, allow the paint to dry completely. For proceeding with the artwork. So that's at the stage we're at now. And if you come over here to the next page, there's variations. And one of them, it, the first one actually, is to print an image on vellum and adhere it to the foil. So what I did is I went through my stash and I found this industrial chic um, vellum that it was already, you know, done. But then I decided to like throw another picture in the mix. And I have um, an Etsy store um, download of some graphics. And um, I just printed one of those. I think it's like from an ATC sheet uh, that I had purchased. And so I printed this onto vellum as well on my inkjet printer and I thought that would probably look kind of good there but I'm gonna have to do some cutting here. I like how this is already distressed and um, you know it has like the hole in it. Um, I like how I don't have to do anything to this just adhere it down. So but the thing is it is a little too wide for my page so I want to tear this here and just kind of do my own distressing on the back. So I'm just going to take, because I'm working with um, a gel medium to adhere this down, I'm going to use a black stays on pad. Um, and I'm going to do it on the back side just so that it matches all these corners that are already distressed. So I'm going to do it on the back side. And I guess I'll do it on the front. Just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. Okay, sorry I did that a little off camera because I just didn't have room here. All right. Put that up. All right. So I think what I'm gonna do, and because it is vellum, Vellum is kind of tricky to get glued down on a page when you have this much check texture on it. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a heavy gel medium. So this is the extra heavy gel by Golden. It's the matte version. And I am going to use a palette knife to put on the back of this and adhere it down. And the same with this. So, oops, I just knocked all my stuff off my desk. Okay. So, I'm just going to take that extra heavy gel 
which I need to buy another tub of it. I guess this time around I need to get the big one. I bought a sampler pack from Golden at Michael's. I used a coupon for it and just to see what mediums I liked and I found I'm actually using all of them so I guess I'll be okay to buy the large versions of all these mediums since I have tried them out. I guess it's a good reason for them to put those sampler packs out because I would not have bought it otherwise. And this is just basically the same thing as using a credit card like I see everybody do on YouTube. I just don't I just don't have a uh, YouTube. I just don't have a old credit card, so I'm using this. Wipe that up because I don't want my journal sticking to it. Put this back in focus. Now I'm going to adhere this down. I made sure I went edge to edge on this because I don't want this lifting up because like I said it's on this textured foil that's also been painted like see this is already coming up a little bit here so I think my gel had already started to this stuff dry super duper fast so I think it had already started to dry when I was putting it before I put it down so I also like this because you can still see some of the texture behind this script print on this vellum. So that's kind of neat too. Alright, so that's really good on there. Now I have adhesive boogers all over my fingers. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm just going to take that other piece that I printed out to my inkjet printer and make sure I go edge to edge on it as well and wipe that off. Make sure I'm in frame here and then Just going to kind of offset that a little bit. And I like how it's just kind of just bleeding into the page here. So I really like that. Alright. So now I am just going to wait for that to dry. Because it's pretty well really saturated. So it needs to dry before I move on to the next step. But we're almost through with the page, so I'll be back. Okay, so I wasn't as done as I thought. I thought I was pretty close to the end of the page, but then I was like, eh, no, I'm not. Um, I meant to sand off some of the top layer of that before I laid this down. Totally forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do is just come over this now just to expose a little bit of the silver foil underneath Okay, good enough. Let's 
So just kind of wanted to expose that a little bit more. Um, some of the silver of the foil underneath. Sanded that down. Okay, now then what I decided as well is that I wanted to kind of frame this picture here out a little bit more. So I have just these mats that I got from the Dollar Tree store. And I am going to use this. I've decided to take a Tim Holtz Alterations Texture Fade. This is the clocks, the one of, of his with the clocks. And <clears throat> I'm going to run this through the Sizzix to get that impression on it. I'll have to run it back through because this is too, you know, too long. So I'll have to do it twice. And um, then I am going to paint this black. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll be back. Okay, so this is how it turned out after I ran it through the Sizzix. I love the impression the clocks made on this. thought it was perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this all black and um, wait for that to dry and then come back and finish it off. And in the meantime, I also decided that just to have like a little, you know, word, I usually put a quote on my pages, but I'm going to just have like a title here because I love the look on her face here. It looks like she's just kind of musing, penseful. So I decided to use the word muse. And I'm using the Tim Holtz grunge blocks um, for this. So I have already punched out my words my letters, I mean, to make up the word muse. And I'm going to do it like that. So I'll have that there, and I'm going to paint these as well, but I'll come back for that after um, I've got them all painted up. So I'll be back. Okay, so I've got a few things out right now because what I am going to do is take the grunge block and I'm going to sand off the top layer of these letters because I want to go back in with the distress ink. This is um, Wild Honey um, distress ink. So I'm going to go over the top of these letters with that, but then I'm going to take the Viva Decor 3D stamp in gold, stamp paint in gold, and um, just kind of finger paint over the top of this embossing to have that come out. So I'm going to finish sanding this, and I will be back. All right, I got all that done. So what I'm going to do is just take some of the Wild Honey, ink it up. Distressed, um, sanded, I mean, um, the edges of this too so they could go in with the ink and, and get that as well. So, anyway, so there is what that looks like. It's my M. I'm going to do that with the rest of the letters here. I think I'm getting more ink on me than I am on the piece itself. Okay, so those are done. Now, through with that, wipe my hands off. Very inky. Okay, now I'm just going to take this 3D paint stamp.
And I'm just going to use my fingers. And I'm going to come down here, just tamp it off. Then I'm just going to go over the raised areas with this. All right, so you, just so you can see how that's kind of turning out, like so. So I'm going to finish this up and um, get it ready to put on the page, and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm ready to put this all together. I'm just going to use the Helmar 450 to get all this put down. Okay, do the same with the chipboard, I mean grunge board, title here. Yeah. Okay. So, all I have to do is put a little date tag on it here on the corner and it will be done. So, that's my page. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I've just put a Jolie sticker down. This is one of the clocks. And I'm going to take a black gelato and frame this out.
I'm going to try to be careful here just in case some of that full tape does have a little ragged edge. I want to make sure I don't cut myself. So I'm going to be a little bit more cautious about rubbing this. This is a, whoops, put my date stamp on it. All right, now this is a done page in my art journal. So I learned a new technique. I'll be back for the next one sometime soon. See you guys later.